So today I'm going to discuss how to beat Marxism, Communism and Socialism. There's been a resurgence of these ideas within the last, I suppose, decade or so, and they are particularly popular with my generation, the generation that we've come to call the Millennials. They are personified best in America by Bernie Sanders and in the UK by Jeremy Corbyn. I think in order to dismantle these ideas, we need to understand the reasons for their resurgence. I think there are three reasons. Um, it's probably some combination of all of them, or at least the first two, and you'll, you'll see what I mean uh, with regards to the third in just a moment. The first is the uh, seemingly unconquerable instinct in young people to rebel against the generation that they are being raised alongside, or raised by, rather. And um, that, I think, is why uh, the millennials have come to be the way they are with regards to Marxism and communism and socialism, because Generation X, the generation that raised them, the generation they looked up to, has no time at all for the ideas of Karl Marx and the descendant theories. Uh, they lived with, or were at least close to living with, uh, Stalin's Russia or Pol Pot's Cambodia and um, Mao's Cultural Revolution in China. They've, they've seen these theories in action and want no part of it. And I feel the millennials have, uh, as an act of rebellion, pushed towards those theories because they've never really seen uh, or really experienced the effects of those theories in action. Uh, this also, just while we're on this note, uh, may be why, or something to do with why, Generation Z, the generation that follows generation, uh, the millennial generation, has pushed back so fiercely against the millennials with their allegiance to Kekistan and their Pepe the Frog memes and all that other good stuff. Um, anyway, back to the reason, so the first one, the need to rebel. The second, um, the narrative that has emerged among millennials uh, that says it's okay to value your feelings over your thoughts. The millennials are a soft and gooey group of people. I know this, I'm around them all the time. And they have been told that your feelings are a, a acceptable moral compass for navigating the world. And when you have that theory in mind, or when you have that belief system in mind, and you hear someone say something like, the rich have too much and the poor have too little, it becomes easy to see how the two become married. And uh, that's why I think, or it is part of the reason that uh, the millennials have formed an allegiance with Marxist ideas. So there's the second one, the feelings over thoughts. The third, and this is one of my own, and this is why I mentioned earlier that it's probably com some combination of the previous two because my own theory is, is likely rubbish, but I think I'll, um, I think I'll put it forward here just to see what feedback I get on it. Um, I call this the wizarding complex, or the wizarding theory, or so something like that. It's, uh, I need the name wizard in it, you'll see why. If you discuss the popular culture of the millennial generation, the conversation won't go on too long before you hear somebody say Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. These are two, uh, or the, are the two dominant stories of the millennial generation. And in each of them, we see an old, wise, grey wizard uh, whose role is to chaperone the young through their problems within those stories. And I think in a strange way, the millennials, because of the heavy influence of these two narratives, have always been seeking an old, wise, grey man to, to lead them uh, over the hills of their dilemmas. And I think they have come to identify that in Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders. And there's also something that perhaps links the second reason, the feelings over thoughts theory, into this second, into this third reason, this, this theory of my own, in that Gandalf and Dumbledore are both mystical figures. They, they speak in tongues, uh, they often communicate in code, everything is a riddle. Um, and there's this sense that, that you are told as the reader and uh, the, the young people in those stories are told that if you just trust in them, everything will be all right. And I can't help but find a parallel uh, to that in the rise of Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn. Anyway, those are the three theories, rebellion, feelings over thoughts, and the wizarding complex. And I think a combination of them has, um, has led to the allegiance that we see between the millennial generation and the Marxist ideas, communism and socialism. Now, how to beat the argument itself. The central principle of 
Marxism, communism and socialism is equality of outcome. And in order to achieve this, you must sacrifice the individual. In fact, you must go even further most of the time and deny that the individual is even a real entity. Now, of course, the data of our own lives tells us that this is not true. If you look around yourself, you'll see that the people you interact with have different skills, abilities, talents, uh, resources, um, uh, passions, interests, motivations, that sort of thing. Um, and therefore, given the differential in these factors, inequality of outcome will always occur. And therefore, equality of outcome requires that we suppress the individual's, the individual's ability to exercise these differences. And in short, equality of outcome requires that we suppress freedom itself. It's only natural, therefore, if you carry the equality of outcome towards its or to its organic conclusion that you end up with gulags and killing fields, because why wouldn't you? If you're valuing the collective, the equality of outcome of the group over the individual, the individual is not your unit of value, something that AI researchers would call um, what do they call it? It'll come to me in just a moment. The utility function of the machine, the, the, the aspect of reality that the machine is trying to maximize. Um, so the, the, the Marxist, communist, the socialist is trying to maxi maximize equality of outcome. Therefore, Marxism, communism, socialism, because of that central principle of equality of outcome, are anti-freedom. And that's why they must be fought against. That's why they must be argued with. That's why ultimately they must be destroyed intellectually. Because if you believe that that line from uh, John Milton that says that there is an innate, primitive, instinctual desire and requirement for human freedom, then Marxism, communism and socialism are all anti-human.